So today, we're going to be getting into this idea of statistical inference, what exactly that is, and this really important idea of the central limit theorem. Okay, so we've heard this idea of, of inference or statistical inference before. We know that the study of statistics is kind of broken down into two main areas, descriptive statistics. We've, we've got all that down. And now we're moving into inferential statistics. All right, so the idea of inferential statistics is we're using a sample to figure something out about the population that it came from. We know about sampling, good sampling techniques, all this kind of stuff. Is we take our sample, we use inference methods to then be able to make, draw some conclusion, to infer, to generalize about our population. Okay, so we know the idea of what that is. So what are some of these methods that we'll be talking about? Well, the, the simplest method is point estimation. Okay, that's just using a single statistic that we calculate from our sample to estimate our parameter of interest. Okay, that's as simple as it comes. From there, we might build off a point estimation to construct confidence intervals. We'll, we'll see those in the future. We'll also see hypothesis tests. Okay, so not too much on those right now. We're just kind of talking basics here. Okay, but eventually what we want to be able to do is for all of these different methods, right, like our sample mean, or x bar, might be a point estimate of our population mean mu for all of these different parameters of interest that we might see throughout the rest of the course. We want to be able to apply all of these different methods down this list as we go. So we're going to start at the top of the list. We're going to say, okay, our parameter of interest is mu. And so that's where we're going to start because that's, that's the easiest. Okay, so we know what mu means, the lowercase Greek letter mu, that's our population mean. Right? And we know that usually we're not, we can't get to the whole population, we can't calculate these parameters. And right? so we have to take a good sample to estimate. So what could we estimate our population mean with? Well, our sample mean. Alright, so let's think about what well, would this sample mean be a good estimate? we got to think about, okay, well, what do we mean by good? All right, so we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, but let's just think about, we know how to calculate these things. Let's just look at their, their formulas. So here is our population mean formula. And here's our sample mean formula. Okay, so is this a good estimate of this? Well, I mean, they look pretty similar. Right, our formulas look similar. You would think that just finding the, the mean of a sample should be pretty close to the mean of the population. All right, so yeah, it's probably a good estimate. What do we really mean by a good estimate? Well, by a good estimate, in our, in our case, in a statistic sense, we mean an estimate that's both accurate and precise. All right, so these are two words that lots of times people use interchangeably right but we know that these mean two different things right so maybe you've you've been exposed to this idea before but here's an example that can kind of demonstrate this idea right so if you've ever tried to play golf you'll know that it's very very difficult because you have to be very accurate and you have to be very precise Right, I have to hit my ball straight, I have to hit it towards my target, right? and my shot in golf has to be, has to be repeatable, has to be predictable. Right? A more consistent shot is more precise. So we know that accuracy has more to do with hitting our target or getting the ball in the cup. Precision has to do with how repeatable is this process. Okay, so let's, let's kind of put that in a statistics sense, right? an accurate estimate then would be something that accurately or correctly, where our statistic correctly estimates the parameter of interest. A precise one would be the more I repeat this process or the more samples that I take, 
do these statistics look to be similar, look to be the same? All right, so accuracy is my statistic close to the actual value of that parameter. Precision, the more I repeat this, how similar are my results? So let's think about this, this in an example. All right, so we'll, so if we take a bag of pretzels, right, that bag of pretzels, let's just say it's, it's a, it's a good size bag. It says it's 16 ounces. All right, so we know if you go out and get a bag of pretzels or a bottle of water or a can of whatever you like to drink, all right, it's got a it's got a number on there, but it, it may not be exactly 16 ounces or exactly 12 ounces. All right, there's a distribution involved there. The goal of the distributor is usually to get all of their all of their items they're producing to average to whatever it says on the bag. All right, so let's let's assume that the mean of this population of bags of pretzels, the weights of these bags of pretzels is 16 ounces. And I'll just arbitrarily design a standard deviation of, of five units, right? five pounds, or sorry, not pounds, ounces. Okay, so, and we'll, let's also assume that this distribution is, is normally distributed. Okay, we know how to deal with the normal distribution. We'll assume it's normally distributed. So say this is our population that we're working with. Obviously, we couldn't go out and sample every single bag of pretzels on the planet, weigh them, and see, okay, do these actually average out to 16 ounces? All right, but what we can do is we can go to our closest vending machine, and maybe we have three bucks. So we take a sample of three bags of pretzels. All right, so I take... One bag of pretzels, 15.8 ounces, 16.8 ounces, 15.1 ounces. That averages out to 15.9. All right, so 15.9, pretty good estimate. Now we know mu is 16, x bar 15.9, pretty close. All right, but not perfect. So what's going to happen if we sample again? Well, just because we sample again from the same population, so maybe I go to a different vending machine. One, two, three bags out of that vending machine. All right, so I get an average here of 15.3 ounces. Go to another vending machine. Three different bags, 17.43. Another one, 15.83. Right, so we're repeatedly sampling three bags of pretzels from, say, four different vending machines. I notice that I got different answers every time. Now our true value is 16. This one's a little bit less, quite a bit less, quite a bit more, and then again, just slightly less. What if we think about the average or the mean of these means? Right, we'll take all these, 15.9, 15.3, 17.43 divided by 4, because we took 4 samples, that gives us 16.115. Pretty close to the true mean, but not perfect. This is all to demonstrate this idea of sampling variability. Right? Every time I choose a new sample, the value of that statistic can change. It doesn't mean the value of the actual population parameter is changing. What's changing is the sample that I take and the statistic that I calculate. All right, so when we did this, we only did it four times. And these are small samples, right? We only had three bucks in our pocket, so we were only able to get three bags of pretzels. So these are small samples, right? But what really could help us is doing this more and more, possibly maybe you're thinking with bigger samples to really demonstrate this idea of sampling variability and see what happens. And the variability of a sample, the variability of a statistic is reflected, or we can visualize this, in what's called this statistics sampling distribution. Okay, so what's a sampling distribution? Well, if I decide I'm going to take a certain sample size, and I'm going to repeatedly sample samples of this sample size in, all the possible values that this statistic could be and how often it takes them on, 
is our sampling distribution. Now this is a theoretical idea because we can't take an infinite amount of samples, right? But using some computer tools, computer simulation, we can take a whole bunch of samples and see, see what we get. All right, so let's see what our sampling distribution looks like and how this ties back to what we were thinking about. All right, so we want an estimate that's both accurate and precise. So when we're visualizing this sampling distribution, we want to think about accuracy as the center of that sampling distribution. All right, we call a statistic where its sampling distribution is centered right at that parameter that we're looking for, we call that an unbiased estimate. Right? Unbiased is a good thing. All right. When we're thinking about the precision of an estimate, the repeatability of an estimate, that is, we can visualize that as the spread of a sampling distribution. We can quantify it as the sampling distribution or the statistics standard error. 